Capcom had a great many franchises under their belt over the years. Of course, they're most known for games such as Resident Evil, Mega Man, Street Fighter, and so forth. However, they did have a large number of other titles that, in many cases, just fell to the wayside over the years. Hello, and welcome to Gaming Thoughts. My name is Sean O'Donnell, and today I'm covering one such title, Shadow of Rome, for the PlayStation 2. So, as always, the question remains, is this game worth the time to play today? Well, let's jump in and find out. Shadow of Rome takes place following the assassination of Julius Caesar. In the game, you're put into the role of two very different characters. Agrippa, a soldier whose father is accused of murdering Caesar and is forced to become a gladiator, and Octavianus, who is Caesar's nephew and is going about trying to prove who really killed Caesar. The graphics to the game are very well done. The stage environments are amazing to look at. They're quite varied. The character sprites are incredibly well done. And there's a lot to really love with the overall look of this game. It fits the overall feel of the game perfectly. The music to the game is very well done and fits the overall motif of the game. It's got a very epic feel to it, which is appropriate for this kind of game. The voice acting is also very well done, and I really did not have any complaints with the voice acting at all in this. Overall, it's very well done. The game is split into two very different styles of gameplay. The first is where you control Agrippa, and those are your action stages. These are generally fought in the gladiatorial arena, and all the fights will be a little bit different. In combat, you have to punch, kick, grab whatever weapon you can, and basically fight to survive the different challenges that are presented to you. Throughout the battle, you can do different combos that will earn you salvo points. And when you appease the crowd, you can also get more powerful weapons, health, and so forth. This is key to winning the fights. Because without appeasing to the crowd, not only are you going to not get the necessary points to win but you're also going to have a much harder time because you'll be using basically crap weapons. The game, though, does have a unique sense of humor about it when it comes to some of the stuff you can do. For example, if you cut off an opponent's arm and then grab said arm and smack him around with it, then appease the crowd, you'll get a nice little reaction from it. Overall, the combat sequences are a lot of fun. They're varied and just, they're a wild time. It raced the other day? Yes, I saw it myself. The people loved him. General Agrippa? Why was he? Word has it that he is obsessed with becoming a gladiator. A gladiator? Hmm. And to 
The other half of the game is where you control Octavianus. And these are stealth sequences that, unfortunately, they kind of detract from the game a little bit. In these stages, you have to try and unravel the mystery of who assassinated Julius Caesar. And so you have to go throughout the stages, trying not to get caught, and so forth. Your, your standard stealth action affair. The problem is, Octavianus is small, weak, and fragile. So if he's caught, or he's attacked, it's game over. He cannot take any hits. He will die instantly. These sections can be a little frustrating. And while it's not a deal breaker... It hurts the flow of the game some. So that, my friends, is Shadow of Rome. And... As far as unsung gems go, for especially for the PlayStation 2, this has got to be right near the top. This game, especially the action sequences, is a lot of fun. I had a blast playing through those stages, beating up enemies, finding different ways to win, and just overall having a great great, bloody good time. Where the game does falter is in the stealth sequences. These can drag the game down a bit, but they're not overly terrible. I've done better stealth sequences in other games, but they're not, they're not a deal breaker. If you can get past the stealth section flaws. You're going to have a tremendous time with this game. It is so, so much fun. And the story's interesting. I was quite pleased with the story. The game has a lot of replay value as well. You can go back and you can play through the gladiator fights whenever you want. You can get unlockables. I know Agrippa can get like a gorilla suit, which is a little funny. And one of the things I got a kick out of is Octavianus can unlock different hairstyles, one of which is the onion head. And with that one, it makes doing the stealth sequences funny because it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. It's simply cosmetic. And so you could be hiding behind like a bush or something. You could still see his big old onion head and the enemies. It, it doesn't register to the enemies. So I thought that was that was kind of funny. Like I said, the game's got a good sense of humor about it, too. It's just, it's overall, it's a fantastic game. And it's a shame it bombed when it was released. And it really needs to be recognized a little bit more. If you have not played Shadow of Rome, pick it up and give it a go. Uh, you're going to have a lot, a lot of fun with it. I, that I can guarantee. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.